I'm Jake, you're watching Gas Guzzlers, and this is the all new 2025 Nissan Kicks. Get it, shoe, kicks, kind of fun. Let's get into it. Now, one of the big stories with the all new redesigned kicks is going to be the availability of all wheel drive. This is gonna make this vehicle a lot more competitive with the likes of the Subaru Crosstrek and other competitors which are offering all wheel drive. Look at our headlights though, definitely some Hyundai vibes here. I'm kind of digging it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We do have features like automatic high beams. The Kicks has a lot of bolt styling. A lot of that is inspired by sneakers. Kicks, sneakers, you get it. This car is actually unveiled at the NCAA tournament. Uh, pretty cool. Looking down here, you can see we have this 3D design on the rocker panel that is inspired by sneakers. We also have this two-tone roof. It kind of reminds me of the Iron Man Kona that Hyundai did for a little bit. I think it is a great look, this silver and red. Absolutely love it. Wheels go anywhere from 16 inches to 19 inches. Real broad fenders on here. I really like the styling of the new kicks. I think it's just bold and the swoopy lines are very different from an otherwise very angular segment. The rear of the kicks might just be my favorite angle of it. Take a look at those bold LED taillights. I think those are particularly striking. The rear of this vehicle just looks like it very much made it out of the prototype phase, the concept car phase, and made it out onto the street. It's just real visually interesting. Let's open up the trunk here. You're gonna find 30 cubic feet of space behind that second row. Put the second row down. You can easily do that by reaching right here. You're gonna find 60 cubic feet of space. That is excellent and beating many competitors. So the Kicks is a very practical shoe-based vehicle. All Kicks will have a digital gauge cluster. Base trims are going to have a seven inch display. The SR like we are in now can upgrade to a full size 12.3 inch display for your gauge cluster. All kicks are going to have a 12.3 inch uh, infotainment screen right here, four USB-C ports in the top line SR like we are in now, and the Bose headrest speakers return. That was a feature unveiled in the last kicks. It was kind of fun, kind of out there. Uh, the kicks was really the only one doing it in this segment, in the small SUV segment. And I'm glad to see that feature stuck around for the new kicks. I'm really glad to see Nissan didn't water down the kicks uh, weirdness, and they just really leaned into making it an out there fun SUV. This might be my favorite element of the Nissan lineup right now. You can't really compare it to the GTR, but outside of that. Here's your 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. You can see it's controlled with these buttons on the steering wheel. Let's go through here, see what we have. Pretty normal driver assist functions here. Uh, you can see the animation's actually very crisp. In the past, I've had problems with Nissan's not responding to inputs on their uh, infotainment systems and drive computers, but as you can see, this is as snappy as, I, uh, as it can possibly be. You can see what cars are around you, see any warnings the vehicle has for you. Overall, this is a great display. The overall interior here is a big upgrade from Nissan's of past. Flat bottom steering wheel for that fun, sporty feel I was talking about. Uh, the red stitching in here definitely adds some visual interest. We have some pretty stiff seats here, which is unique for Nissan. Nissan usually does overstuffed, very soft seats I'm not the biggest fan of. These seats feel very appropriate for a younger demo. Demographic. I really like the seat decisions they've made with the kicks. There's also kind of an interesting soft touch material up here on the dash. It has a carbon fiber kind of texture to it. The red and white stitching throughout the vehicle keeps things interesting. And the shifter feels really sturdy. Why do I point that out? On Nissan vehicles of past, I felt like the shifter was about to snap off every time I used it. Not here. This feels like a shifter in any other car. Really, really like the upgrades Nissan is making to the interior here. I also have to point out these cup holders. These are the largest, deepest, most ridiculous cup holders I have ever seen. Cups are getting larger. People let need not only their large Baja Blast, but also their 32 ounce Stanley cups for the latest water talk trend. So having massive cup holders are basically a giant cavern seems rather appropriate. I think the widescreen infotainment format does a lot of good for the way Nissan lays out their system. As you can see, we have these tiles. The animations here are not quite as smooth as they are in the digital gauge cluster, but it's pretty easy to navigate. And of course, you have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which are gonna look great in this widescreen format. Let's check out your climate controls here. Pretty standard climate control setup, 
but you also have physical controls down here. As you can see, we do have heated seats. Start stop buttons in a bit of a weird place down here. Um, and then we have what? More charger. The first thing I noticed when I got in the rear of the kicks was how light and airy it is in here. I did not expect that given the high belt line of the vehicle. While that's very stylish, it tends to shrink the windows and cut off the amount of light in the back, which makes the space feel more cramped. However, the windows here seem pretty large proportional to the doors despite that high belt line. And you have this gigantic glass roof. This is one of the larger ones that I have seen in a crossover of this size. So it feels just very large and airy back here. And as you can see, I'm six feet tall. This is where I would sit if I were a passenger. You could easily fit four six foot tall adults in here. And Nissan does a good job of cutting out the back of the seat a little bit to give you a little bit of extra space. No air vents back here. You do have two USB-C ports so you could plug in a little USB fan. You're not gonna fit someone in the middle here comfortably, but you know what? You can't really expect that from a vehicle of this size. And then we do have two pull out cup holders. I really like the rear space here. It's fun, it's airy, and plenty of legroom, which I would argue is the most important thing at this price point. All kicks are going to come with Nissan Safety Shield 360. That's gonna get you all the standard safety features. Think your front end collision warning and prevention systems, your blind spot monitoring, but they are also going to get radar cruise control, which not all vehicles in this segment have, looking at you, Buick and Vista Avenir, even though that's a little bit ridiculous. The top of the line SR model is going to get Nissan Pro Pilot Assist, which is going to be essentially your hands-on semi-autonomous driving mode. Uh, but again, hands on the wheel, paying attention at all times. All kicks will come with a two liter inline four cylinder engine, putting out 141 horsepower and 140 pound feet of torque. I'm excited to see the new Nissan Kicks out on the road later this year. I think it's gonna be a fun car to drive. It clearly has a lot of value and a lot of work put into it. I think Nissan might have a home run here and I do have a new favorite Nissan. So guys, make sure to like and subscribe to see more Kicks content throughout the year. I'm Jake, you're watching Gas Guzzlers. This is the 2025 Nissan Kicks. We'll see you in next week's video.